All right, welcome back to Full House 7th Edition, where we are playing Vanheim, and it is turn one. <laughs> Dread level is high, even though there's not really much to be done on this turn. I am extremely concerned <laughs> with this build and how it will expand, uh, but in the meantime, there was chaos, and now there will be chaos again. And it looks like we have spawned, yeah, <laughs> pretty far away from the water, about as far away as you can get, uh, which makes me a little sad. Well, maybe not as far away as possible, so uh, just because we'd like to be near the water, we'll probably try to expand, you know, something like this eventually, someday-ish. I'm not really sure if it's worth it, like, we'll see. It depends a lot, of course, on, you know, what actually happens, what our neighbors decide, where we're able to expand to in the short run. Uh, so that could change a lot, uh, but, you know, we do want to try to reach the coast, uh, which is not something I normally say. <laughs> I normally try to avoid the coast for the water nations, and, you know, maybe it's, like, still worth it, because, I mean, at the end of the day, our van here's are always going to come out of our capital, and they're always going to be really, I don't know, about really far away from the water, but decently far away from the water before they can actually start to sail around. Uh, but it's a good a direction to go blindly uh, as any. Um, our throne access seems actually pretty good. Uh, we have a throne in the cap circle, which seems relatively common uh, for the full house games. And that's always a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, but we have another throne that's quite close, so we might be able to pick that up early as well. And then moving farther afield, uh, we have another one here to the west that you know, isn't close, but isn't too far. Uh, the south actually is a bit appealing because there's these these three thrones like that aren't you know too far away from each other. So if we push more in a southerly direction, that'll be better for our thrones. Uh, but if we do choose to try to march to the sea, then there's another throne over here, and then another throne to our north. Uh, let's make sure that I'm not yet yeah, double counting due to the wrap. Nope. So yeah, like a decent number of thrones that aren't like too far away from us. Uh, otherwise, our capital uh, is in a highlands, which is kind of sad, right? Because that hinders movement. So you know, anything that we're moving out of our capital is going to move quite slowly for the first turn. Uh, that said, like troop-wise, we're not very fast, so it kind of doesn't matter. Like it really only matters for like our cap-only mages who are pretty fast, but you know have to get out of a highland for their first turn. So it's not the end of the world, but it's not ideal either. Uh, that said, we'll hopefully have more resources than normal. Um, I'll take a look once I recruit things up. But early on, like resources actually kind of are a problem for us. Like normally the elves aren't super, you know, resource focused, but the Van Heers are kind of unusual for elves and they do wear decently heavy armor and, you know, need those resources. And of course, at the start of expansion, resources are always tight. Uh, speaking of resources, unfortunately, you know, one of the uh, resource heavy provinces in our cap circle is the throne, so we're not going to be able to take advantage of this. Uh, but we do at least, you know, have another forest here that we can take advantage of. But otherwise, our cap circle is looking a little light, right? These are just plains, uh, and then these are farmlands, which are going to be very low. Uh, this is at least a farmland mountain, which is a bit sad because that'll probably cut down on its income. On the other hand, like, we do really need resources. We need money, too, as the elves. Uh, so anyway, perfectly acceptable cap circle. Uh, we should certainly be able to do something with it. And I'll catch you guys after the jump. All right, this is the situation and what we're doing about it. Uh, we're going to send our scout north to the forest because that's what we're most interested in. Uh, there is something to be said for actually scout pinging, so attacking and retreating the province. And I think early on, I probably do want to start doing that more. Uh, but you do run the risk of losing the scout, and because our expansion is a little on the wonky side and we would prefer to avoid bumps uh, where at all possible until all of our bless comes online, I, I would like to hold on to this scout. So we're not going to ping uh, recruitment-wise, like you can already see the wonkiness. We're not recruiting our sacreds. And yeah, I kind of go back and forth on this. Like for the initial army, like it's there's enough other units that you know adding six more versus we can get uh four of our sacreds so resource wise that's like roughly standard for the testing i don't think the highlands really helped us that much um and it does seem with elf expansion parties really with most expansion parties like once you hit a certain critical size like you really take a lot less attrition and for the purposes of expansion and with how we've set up the bless like the van here is actually don't really perform that much better than our scales troops so anyway, I'm back and forth on it, but I think I'm going to go with the skills troops uh, just to add to our starting army, and then it's pretty much going to be almost all Van here production from then on out. 
Uh, but like I said, <laughs> kind of a wonky build. Uh, I like to get the dwarves early on, mostly to save on money. Uh, they are also, like, they're slow to recruit, and that's where the, the money savings come from. They're also relatively cheap, and they cost about the same, in fact, exactly the same as a Van Hurst. Uh, and money is a big problem, at least, you know, without good enough scales. And I suspect, really, in general, like, the elves are really, really expensive. You know, the Van Hurst are 40 apiece, but even our regular troops are 25 apiece. Uh, this does mean that, you know, we can't expand as quickly, right, because we're going to have two turns, but it's going to take us two turns to build up another expansion force of Van Heers anyway, uh, and then so by the time it's ready, we can get a Van Hurst to lead that out. So we're going to be aiming for an expansion party, you know, every second turn, but we'll see if we hit that. We'll probably have to reinforce, like, some expansion parties, and we're probably going to get out expanded here, so we're going to need to be really careful uh, early on. We're kind of just aiming, you know, to not have any major failures, make sure, you know, we get our cap circle and then a little bit more expansion outside of that, and then kind of hang tight until, you know, our bless comes online, and then we're going to try to expand, you know, finish expansion uh, into another nation. Or, you know, if somebody takes a look at our bless and thinks like, eh, I think I can take them on, this Vanheim doesn't know what, what he's doing, uh, which is probably accurate, <laughs> but we will at least have a lot more bless coming online around, hopefully, turn 12. Uh, so at that point, you know, we'll just have to give ground and basically, you know, play dead and hopefully hold them off long enough uh, until our bless comes online and then turn things around, right? And then that'll be that that'll be the nation that we expand into. Uh, so anyway, enough speculation. Uh, this is what we have set up. We don't have any research going just yet. Uh, I do like to profit the starting commander. I don't think there's any reason not to with Vanheim. Uh, you know, this guy is like fast and stealthy. And he's not a particularly amazing caster anyway, so I think, you know, he's a pretty good choice, and the turn one profit uh, does help, you know, spread your dominion more quickly. Uh, and then our research plan for the moment, uh, again, of course, no idea what I'm doing here, but we're going to go to Construction 2 first, and then Evocation 2. Construction 2, we're looking at uh, Alquils, which I know a lot of people say that air nations uh, shouldn't bother. Uh, because you need those air gems for your wars, for like cloud trapeze, but most especially uh, for air elementals. Uh, we definitely will go up to Conjuration 5 and we will use air elementals, but I'm going to try to not rely on air elementals immediately. You know, that said, like if we get rushed, probably panic and go for the air elementals. Uh, but assuming it doesn't all go wrong, like Construction 2 does give us at least a little bit of thug gear uh, to help out. And then Evocation 2 gets us Lightning Bolt which is actually uh, not something I think the Van Hurses can cast uh, without the use of a gem. So speaking of needing those air gems for your wars, uh, once we get Storm and summon Storm Power, right, then they won't need those gems anymore. But, you know, it's, it, Evocation 2 is really more of a safety move. Like I said, I am pretty concerned about this build. We may have to fight early. If for some reason it's going really well, we might hold off on the Evocation research uh, for a little while. So yeah, I think that covers turn one. All right, welcome back to Full House 7th Edition, where we are playing Vanheim. It is turn two. Time to see uh, how bad the Indies are going to be. Also, uh, a lot of profit declarations, so so I'm not going to drag you through all the god and profit names. I'm sure, you know, we will see them as we bump into them and fight against them. But I have selected one that at least made me laugh, so hopefully you enjoy it as well. And let's take a look at what our Indie situation is. So, not the worst situation, probably not the best situation either. Uh, it looks like our easiest province is to the northwest here. I think pretty high confidence that we can take this with almost no losses. Um, and it's a very rich province, so like absolutely we want to get in there quite quickly. You know, we need gold just period throughout the game. However, this is a pretty low resource province, so it's not going to help with our recruitment issues. We might try to go directly to our north, where we have just some deer tribe. Deer tribe are generally pretty easy, although the elves do not like how many projectiles uh, tribe manages to bring. So, you know, deer tribe are a little more dangerous for us than normal. Uh, but since this is where our scout is, this should be more accurate <laughs> than a lot of other scout reports. Now, we also have a good chunk of deer tribe down here. And then the throne itself uh, is mostly like wolf tribe and then some phantasmals and heavy infantry. Like this isn't a very scary uh, throne in terms of the actual like defenders. We don't have any, any information about the mages on top of it. And the other thing is since we will want a fort here anyway, we can possibly use this uh, for our nature access since nature access is something we don't have natively and you know, we're definitely going to want that. So we have three options in our cap circle. We do need to think a little bit about resources. Um, but, you know, since we're mostly just interested in recruiting our sacreds and we can, we're holy point limited, 
we can definitely get away with like one fort in our cap circle, though we do want to consider, you know, where like we probably don't want to fort this since this is going to be our highest resource province. Possibly like once we completely clear the cap circle, it won't be too bad. Uh, but we do want to be careful about that. Uh, of note, in terms of the, that, that's the, the good news on the indie front. The bad news <laughs> is uh, 40 horse tribe. So hopefully this will trend down. Uh, we definitely don't love horse tribe. Horse tribe are pretty dangerous for most factions. Um, and yeah, we're, we're no different. Uh, it's We do a little bit better against the lance charge since a lot of our stuff has high defense, although Van Heers do not. And of course the arrows pop our clamor, so yeah, uh, Van here's against Horse Tribe, uh, until the Bless comes online, not such a great matchup for us. Though our skills troops actually should do a bit better, but 40 is a lot, so we're going to have to sit on this for at least a little bit, and maybe use some mercenaries. Uh, and then to the south we have Lies and Deceit. There's a pretty good chance that there are elephants, or maybe something uh, something else that's also nasty uh, in here that's hiding so we'll probably want to bounce a commander off this just to make sure if it really is just slingers and militia uh, then this is going to be a pretty easy province and like yeah we talked about why we'd want this one so yeah i'll catch you guys after the cut all right this is the situation and what we're doing about it uh, we're going to go for the deer tribe immediately uh, there's definitely an argument to go for these guys since i think this is going to be a bit of an easier province on the other hand i think you know this expansion party is actually going to be our largest expansion party for a while and when it comes to the tribe i do feel like numbers uh, are useful so we're actually going to drop off uh, some of our starting army we're going to leave it behind in the capital the surf warriors the surf warriors are pretty worthless uh, i think you know in the larger sense of the game, they're really only useful as like cheap uh, siege strength, and even then, it's questionable. Uh, but early on, like you know, you do need to use them, but they are truly awful. And I find that even if you bring all of them, they almost always rout and you know take really heavy losses in like the first battle that you use them. Uh, so you know, we're just bringing half since they're all going to be eliminated. We don't want to trigger an HP route or anything like that. Uh, so I mean, their job is just to catch arrows and javelins. In fact, probably should move them out a little bit farther ahead. We don't want them to get completely obliterated before our elves show up. Uh, but we also ideally do not want to take any arrow fire. And so yeah, I think that's you know one of the ways to use it. We'll probably use the other half with our next expansion party again to provide a little bit of mass and help reduce the elf casualties. We may actually recruit some surf warriors uh, during expansion, kind of for the same purposes. I've played around with it both ways, and I'm, I'm still not 100% sure. Uh, the other thing you can do with the surf warriors, which I do quite like, and you know this is really more like of a safety measure, right? Because I'm a little bit concerned about our expansion. Uh, but the other thing you can do is just you know take them in groups of five and give them as bodyguards uh, to your commanders. Because elves have such small, like this is a large elf expansion party, so because they're often you know sending in such small numbers of units, it's not uncommon uh, for the indies to you know just completely wrap around or for some of the indies to miss your troops and end up attacking your commander and while elves are good you know they can absolutely get surrounded and killed so you know even just having some chaffy awful bodyguards will just you know help keep them alive uh, while your elves you know route the indies and so yeah i quite like that use as well i think you know if you're more confident about the situation that's probably the better use of them because just helps prevent like you know some random failures and like again you're only going to get one use out of these surf warriors you pretty much actually only get one use because like when they do wrap and they have to fight spotting hearts they usually die and or run away um but they at least like stick around longer and they can support like you know more expansion parties since you're using them in smaller groups uh, so anyway, that's some thoughts uh, about Surf Warriors. Uh, the other thing of note is I do not like elves, or I do, <laughs> often I don't like elves, uh, but I don't like javelins on elves, really. Um, I find that the javelin exchanges just rarely go in your favor, right? You don't like your glamour getting popped, so you, you don't really like projectiles anyway, so sitting there and exchanging projectiles is not ideal from that standpoint, and you're also usually somewhat heavily outnumbered, uh, which does not favor you in like a missile fire exchange. So like, while absolutely, I love javelins, I think on the elves, I kind of prefer to just have them go in and attack. They will eventually like throw their javelins on their own anyway, so generally they do get used, uh, but I find that, you know, having that javelin exchange is just not advantageous for the elves. So we're just, even though our guys have javelins, we're just going to send them in to attack and, you know, we don't want them shooting. 
So yeah, fingers crossed. Uh, you know, Deer Tribe, not exactly the most fearsome opponent, uh, but if you've seen some of my other series, you know that uh, Deer Tribe can give me problems at times. And uh, yeah, I think that more or less covers turn two. All right, welcome back to Full House 7th Edition, where we are playing Vanheim. It is turn three. Uh, and I have not seen the results of this, which is normal, but we actually had a rollback uh, due to some timer problems. And some people were pointing out that, you know, you could actually take a look at the turn and then maybe <laughs> see the result of your battle and decide, eh, maybe let's not do that. Luckily, uh, I had not yet looked at the turn uh, before the rollback happened, and I decided not to tempt fate, so I have no idea. We'll see how it goes against these deer tribe. I am super worried, uh, which is a sad thing to be saying. And you're a bunch of elves against Deer Tribe. Okay, it looks like the scout report was high. Thank heavens. Okay, feeling much better. So we're going to lose the serfs, definitely. And of course they go for the elves, because, yeah, they're actually... The archer's targeting is, like, not bad. Most of the time, I don't even bother setting targets uh, for the archers. I just let them fire, and uh, they they usually do. They do work. <laughs> I, I, I like their choices, so... Uh, unless they're being used against me, <laughs> in which case I do not appreciate their choices. Uh, but we, the serfs actually don't even route. That's how like low of an amount, right? This is down from, I think it was like 40 or 50. Uh, so there you go. The serfs proving me wrong, actually surviving a combat. And, you know, this is, we actually stripped like half of them out of the starting army. So you could bring more serfs if you wanted to. Uh, but I don't recommend it. That said, we do lose one of our elves, which is a big deal. I find that this is relatively normal, especially like with an expansion party of this size. If we were doing real scales expansion and like had a scales build, we might aim to have slightly larger parties. Although with one fort, it is pretty difficult. This is a lot of elves. But yeah, at the end of the day, you know, their armor is not, right, their protection is low, uh, so we do not love ranged units. So this kind of attrition is fairly normal, and it's going to have to be acceptable. Uh, but considering the doomsday scenarios I was worried about, uh, that works out. We do have a couple profit uh, proclamations that came out late, and I will catch you guys after the jump. All right. This is the situation and what we're doing about it. Uh, not too much to this turn. We are at least getting some research going. Uh, our first dwarf random into Earth, which uh, is not the best, but Earth 3 is a really useful path uh, to have. So, you know, it's not a bad random. I think probably my least favorite are the ones that random into air, but, you know, even those ones are useful. Uh, so we're going to switch over. We're going to recruit a, a Van Hurst, and he will lead our next expansion party. Uh, with the addition of that province, we can now, like, squeak out our last van here, and we are wholly point limited uh, from here forward. Uh, except when we are gold limited, <laughs> which will probably be often. Uh, but at least for now, we can get, uh, you know, full van here uh, production. And so we'll actually be able to have an expansion group of nine Van Heers, and we'll probably send them out, you know, with a little bit of a few of the Surf Warriors. Uh, there's really no reason to leave them at home. They'll probably go after these Deer Tribe here. Uh, and so, yeah, then we'll hopefully have two expansion parties going for a little bit. Um, we already see some Dominion here, so there's a good chance there's a capital here. And, you know, I am pretty concerned that we may bump at this location. Uh, it's... Actually, there shouldn't be any elephants here. I think elephants are always with slingers, but, you know, who knows? This is Dominions. Anyway, all this to say that the terror level is pretty high for this expansion. Uh, this was the 30 units last turn from the scout report, and it is inside of our Dominion, which I believe does help provide more accurate, not completely accurate scout reports. Uh, so fingers crossed that it's no more than 40. You know, if we get up to, like, the 50, 60 range, that's, like, too much, even, I think, with... I mean, we, it could work, but it would be very dangerous and then probably be the end of our expansion party. So hopefully this is more like 30. Uh, luckily, there's at least... Uh, well, I mean, there's a few archers, but mostly uh, not a lot of projectiles. The archers are the smallest component. Uh, so in that sense, it's good. Also, you know, we really need this income. It's part of our cap circle, right? Somebody's probably close by. We need to establish these borders uh, the only good news is we do a little bit better against barbarians than a lot of other people and this isn't that many barbarians so we might try to slam into this immediately right and you know establish even better borders with this neighbor uh, but we are also recruiting a little bit more garbage some deer tribe uh, we don't actually have anybody to lead these units with yet uh, so hopefully we'll be able to recruit a commander out of this province next turn uh, but then that kind of begs the question well what are these guys going to do um, it depends on how the battle goes we might try to go for the barbarians immediately um, especially if the scout report trends down or you know stays roughly the same otherwise we may actually just site search uh, searching for air 
there is really important for Vanheim. Um, I wouldn't, this isn't ideal, right? It's definitely more important to expand. Uh, but, you know, if we have to wait a turn or two versus like failing, failing expansion, I, I think it is better to wait oftentimes, but it does also depend on like, you know, what our neighbor here is doing. Uh, otherwise, like I said, you know, yeah, this deer tribe down here is probably going to be the route for our ne next expansion. And then, you know, we might try to do something like this and like loop back up and, you know, connect here to the north. Um, you know, we're kind of, we're probably going to be north, like northeast focused, which kind of works out anyway, right? We kind of wanted to go towards the coast. Um, again, I think even if we do make it to the coast, I think a lot of our coastal advantages, I mean, we still have sailing, right? So it's like, okay, we won't be able to move fan here is coming from the capital out to other locations really quickly um, but at least our movement you know along the coast is still going to be fast so it's not like the coast is a bad thing for us uh, but beyond that uh, you know we do need to ping this but I have a strong suspicion that these are elephants which um, we don't love uh, we can deal with the horse tribe are actually probably the worst uh, you know, the, you know, of the of the indie types like you know nearby us um and then it you know leads into a throne and so then these mountain passes are probably going to get blocked so we may have a little bit more time but yeah we're just realistically not going to expand probably that far uh in this direction so you know we'll see right we we haven't seen any other dominion so that's a good sign so maybe we do have some some room over in this direction and then yeah we'll hopefully talk to this player uh, as soon as we know who they are, hopefully without bumping, there definitely were some people in the general chat, you know, dropping in province numbers and being like, hey, I'm going to expand here, you know, don't bump with me, like, who's nearby? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think there's anything, like, wrong with that. I just, I don't know, right? It's like I prefer to actually, like, meet people in-game and, you know, throwing out province numbers. You know, sometimes people will intentionally try to, you know, bump you too, right? So there's a bit of risk with a strategy like that. I think probably most of the time it'll work out because most people probably aren't looking for a bump. So unless you get unlucky and like the person who took, you know, a really aggressive awake expander is right next to you and is like, ooh, here's my opportunity to wipe out an expansion party. It's probably going to work out in your favor. Um, but also I do think that, right, we're going to somewhat try to rely on Vanheim's reputation. And usually Vanheim is a faction that is like interested in bumping people, right? Vanheim's like, okay, I'm probably going to rush someone, you know, with really nasty uh, blessed Van here's. Which I don't think is, you know, I think you can play a scales Vanheim, not being a Vanheim expert, but it certainly seems possible to me. Uh, but just, you know, the Van Heers are so good that, you know, people tend to lean that way. So, you know, if a Van, if a Vanheim is, you know, being like, oh, I'm going to expand here and like, please don't bump me. It, I don't know. It kind of would raise flags, certainly for me. It's like, well, what's up with this Vanheim? Uh, so we're going to try to play it cool, despite all the terror. Um, and also, like I said, I just, I don't know, right? You just got to roll with the random. Uh, I think we discussed research, but just in case, here's what it is. Uh, we're not going to dis discuss it at length. Uh, once we get there, you know, maybe we'll talk a, a little bit more about it. So yeah, I think that covers turn three. All right, welcome back to Full House 7th Edition, where we are playing Vanheim. It is turn four, and of course, the terror is high. <laughs> Don't love this build. Um, so yeah, let's see. These are militia and such, some heavy infantry who more than I was hoping for, definitely. And like a decent contingent of archers too, which is not great. Uh, we're back positioned uh, to try to let the different speeds, you know, distance themselves out, spread themselves out. Um, and also the archers are shooting at maximum range, which is good. Uh, it'll be, you know, less precise. So yeah, like our infantry goes in. I think I set these guys, yeah, to fire javelins, which normally I don't do, but in this case, right, it's like it just provides we're going to take less casualties among the guys that we care about so yeah the serfs go down and definitely us throwing the javelins into our serfs uh, who are you know in melee you know kind of guaranteed uh, that, that we weren't going to have any more serfs at the end of this battle uh, for this expansion party uh, but it, you know it cuts down I don't know hard to say right we may have actually been able to keep the serfs because they were doing okay actually um, in melee it seems so maybe if we'd slammed in immediately we would have been able to keep them uh, that is actually the first time I tried that it more or less worked out you know as I expected so you know we lose the serfs but that's fine we definitely do like you know having a bit of chaff out in front so in that sense it's sad but I mean that's what the chaff is there for so you know you're gonna lose you're gonna lose it from time to time. Fomoria coming out with a very late profit not sure what's up with that oh, a Numidian sorceress okay yeah she's slow to recruit an interesting profit choice. I think she's stealthy, um, and a lot of people like stealthy profits, so that would be my guess. Unexpected event. 
hey, fountain of fire, so maybe there's actually this site nearby, but oftentimes it's just a lie. Nonetheless, it's not a bad event, and we get some fire gems, so I'm going to call that a win. And yeah, I'll catch you guys after the jump. All right. This is the situation and what we're doing about it. Uh, not too much when it comes to our own moves, but we do see our first neighbors. Uh, so let's talk about our moves first, then we'll talk about our neighbors. Uh, so, you know, this province got revealed. Uh, it's mostly mi militia and light cavalry, which aren't very good. Um, and we actually do better as elves uh, against heavy cavalry. Um, but this is still a lot of units. Like, we don't like, you know, tons of troops to have to cut through because we just don't have a lot of numbers so we're going to keep an eye on this scout report you know if it trends down this is definitely a province we could jump in and take um also i you know i said we didn't we're going to talk about our neighbors but it does look like the jibalba is in a bit of trouble um i mean it's hard to say right yomi is in their cap circle this is actually one of the players yomi uh that was you know talking a lot about trying to avoid bumps and yet here they are in a cap circle that said it's the early age uh so you know you don't get to see very many province names ahead and it is actually pretty easy uh, to end up in somebody's cap circle in the early age on accident. So this may not be a hostile move, um, but also, I mean, right, this is a cap circle province not owned by Jabalba, and then these two are neutral. So that still leaves like a decent number of cap circle, but this one's across a river. They do have flyers, uh, but all this to say that it certainly at first glance doesn't look like Jabalba's doing great, and they're also a, a nation that tends to struggle early. Uh, so we probably have a bit more time for, for this province, right? Like it's unlikely that Jabalba is going to look at this and be like, oh yeah, this is easy. I'll just run a bunch of stuff into it because I'm doing really well and I don't have a bunch of other problems. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to sit on that, and we're going to, let's see, we're recruiting just a regular uh, commander. I do find that they're really useful early on and really throughout. Uh, unfortunately, not a lot of uh, resources in this province. This might still be our first fort. It's a very valuable province, and it also won't really cut down on our capital resources very much. Uh, and it'll, you know, help defend our whole situation. Like, again, it's going to be a little rough early on, and the elves tend to not need a ton of resources, right? The van here need a good amount of resources, but otherwise, especially because we recruit so few units at a time, uh, and this will have, like, plenty of, like, this is a highlands up here, so assuming we get this, and we really do kind of need this, so, you know, and... It, well, this province probably doesn't have a ton of resources, uh, but the highlands alone plus this forest, like, should be enough uh, to make it a decent fort for us. Uh, so with this expansion party, I know I talked about maybe going after these barbs. Uh, this is probably incorrect, right? Because now our scout has moved out of it, so the scout report's going to be less accurate. Um, but still, like, 60 barbarians, like, how accurate was the first one, really? <laughs> Uh, so we're not going to slam into that immediately. Uh, instead, we're going to move over here and pick up uh, these deer tribe that we've been recruiting. And we're recruiting some more deer tribe because uh, we just need some garbage out in front, you know, especially for these barbarians. We may try to grab this first. This is a pretty easy province. It's not a great province, um, but still, like, it'll cut off our northern neighbor uh, from the throne here. And, like, there's a good chance Yomi, uh, they mentioned in the, the game chat that they had lots of mountains, like, around them. So, like, I don't, I think their capital is, like, probably here or here or maybe here. Here actually seems more likely. Uh, so we're going to need to move in this direction, like, relatively quickly. You know, Yomi seems to be expanding decently well. Uh, probably the other final note about our neighbors is uh, Yomi is being played uh, by my old nemesis, uh, Kalem from 5e, so not likely uh, to be working closely uh, with this player, and like normally it's like, okay, maybe jump in, right, like Shivalva's probably on their way out already. I mean, who knows? We'll see. It's still very early, but, you know, first glance, that's what it looks like, so it's like, okay, maybe just try to vulture what we can from Shivalva, uh, but considering we're probably not going to have very friendly relations with Yomi, I mean, Maybe Jabalba is actually a friend in this case. I don't think Yomi is a good target for us. Um, maybe ever. At least not until we get like decent construction. Because uh, there's items we can forge that will help us definitely. Uh, but the problem is Bloodbond is not going to love uh, how hard the demons hit. And we're not going to have enough protection. It'll definitely help. Um, and we have magic weapons, right? So the spirit form of the Oni isn't such a big deal for us. Uh, but, you know, even getting up to, like, 20 protection, like, 
most of the demons, even the Ko-Oni, will be able to do chip damage, and especially in favorable uh, conditions for them, because they get certain bonuses, like in Turmoil, uh, they'll, they'll still be really dangerous. Uh, and the larger demons will absolutely be able to cut through 20 protection, right? And that's, you know, kind of really the only defense <laughs> of our van here, uh, other than the fact that they just kill really, really quickly. Uh, but then, you know, Ko-Oni stack in because they're size one. So anyway, all this to say that I don't think Yomi is going to be a good initial target for us. And they may come after us, right, depending on if they catch our bless, right, and see how lacking it is uh, before all of it comes online. So we might get rushed by Yomi. Uh, we'll have to see. Um, but it does look like, you know, expanding to the north could be a bit problematic, you know, especially if Yomi's capital is here. That doesn't really leave us with a ton of room. Um, you know, maybe we can jump in on the Jabalba situation. But again, like, it's kind of looking like we might want to help Jabalba. Uh, so we'll see. We're sending our other, uh, our new expansion party down at these Deer Tribe. Uh, definitely concerned about this. You know, we should win, especially with our chaff uh, that will burn away. Uh, but we'll probably lose like a van here or two. You know, we don't love the projectiles. And we're, you know, pretty much doing scales expansion without the scales. <laughs> so, you know, I do think we're going to win this. Um, and it will hopefully, you know, we at least have two options to expand from there. So hopefully one of these will be relatively easy. Um, it would be kind of nice maybe if we try to, like, loop around like this. You know, just give ourselves a bit of a better shape. Um, but, yeah, maybe it's looking like we're actually going to have to expand out in this direction. Right? It all depends on, you know, who's out there and how they're doing. I don't think we have a bid in for any mercenaries. No, um, we didn't uh, hire those mercenaries. No surprise there. Uh, the shipwreckers went to Marverni. Um, and it looks like Fomoria got uh, some underwater expansion guys, although there's a decent chance they're not using it for underwater expansion. Fomoria is a power that can, a land power that can go underwater, uh, but with all the water nations in, I think it's going to be pretty difficult to hold on to an underwater uh, enclave. Uh, so in terms of what we're doing with our money this turn, other than wasting it on some deer tribe, <laughs> we're getting, unfortunately, we can only get uh, four van here. I think like this extra herdman uh, that I thought we'd be able to squeak out is actually like pushing our van here just barely off. So that's unfortunate. Uh, but still, you know, Van Heers, and then we're getting a Dwarf. Uh, so we're going to repeat this probably one more time, I think. Uh, so, you know, next turn we'll get the Van Heers, and we'll close out the Van Heers. And we may have to combine with one of our other expansion groups. I find that, like, you know, these little groups of, like, eight Van Heers with the Bless that we have, uh, you know, do tend to attrit down. And for some of the tougher provinces, it is important to combine. So, again, our expansion is not going to be stellar. But it's not completely awful, right? We have, you know, three provinces on. Okay, that's actually not great. <laughs> I was gonna say three provinces on three provinces on turn three, uh, but of course that's not true. Uh, and we're yeah, we're gonna remain behind next turn because we've only got one expand. Uh, hopefully after that we'll have two expands or maybe even three expands. I am still a little hesitant to go into these guys, although the scout report is down. Um, ideally, we get this. The first thing this commander is going to do is just bounce off of this province and see, like, well, you know, what? How many elephants are there? Uh, and if there aren't very many elephants, then yeah, we may send our, our third group uh, at this province. Obviously, it's in our cap circle. Um, it is a mountain, so that's going to cut into its uh, the income. But I mean, it's a farmland as well, uh, so it'll at least be okay income probably, and we might get a decent amount of resources, which we do still need in the capital. Um, and we do need to kind of establish like our southern presence as soon as possible because, uh, you know, anytime somebody shows up and they're in their cap circle, it does kind of raise questions. Not always. Like this is pretty early, right? So it's like maybe Jabalba really like expanded hard in the, in the other direction and they're actually doing pretty well. Um, but, you know, anytime somebody shows up in, their, in your cap circle, they're like, hmm, maybe this player isn't doing that well. Uh, so and especially because we kind of want to lay low, you know, and play dead a little bit until uh, our bless comes online. We really really don't want someone to end up in our cap circle uh, and while like the these this 50 horse tribe I think is going to do a pretty good job of defending it and blocking us um, I think that this is much more likely to get taken out especially because every once in a while there isn't anything special and it's just slingers and militia and it's a really easy province right so somebody you know might get sucked in and be like okay yeah let's go for this without being cautious and it might work out for them uh, so anyway I think that covers turn four